What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Google Pixel 7a, tips and tricks, and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now the Google Pixel 7a has a lot of really awesome features and abilities, and I'm looking forward to showing you my favorites here in this video. Now this device did launch several months ago, so I am a little bit behind on creating this, However, the device has since gotten the Android 14 update. Now with the Google Pixel 7a, we're getting a very large 6.1 inch display. Now that's an excellent thing when it comes to actually using the phone because you're getting a really large canvas here to consume content. However, when using the phone with just one hand, it can be very difficult, if not impossible, to reach all portions of the display. Now thankfully, Google has come up with a cool solution to this and it's called one-handed mode. So let me show you how to get to that. So what you're going to do is pull down the shade here, go to the gear icon to take you over to the settings, then from there go to search, and then type in one, handed, and you'll see right there one-handed mode. Now one-handed mode is located under the gestures settings menu, and I'm going to show you all these other various things here later on in the video, but for now, let's go over to one-handed mode, and then you can see that it's actually not enabled by default. So we'll enable that. And then the first option here, which is already selected, is to pull the screen into reach. So now with this feature enabled, all you have to do is just swipe down on the bottom bar here, and then it lowers the entire operating system so you can reach everything up towards the top. Then to get out of this, all you have to do is just tap outside of the operating system, and then it brings everything back to how it was before. So let's say I want to reach the upper portion of the web browser, but I don't want to shift my hand all the way up. Then all I have to do is just swipe down on this bar, and then I can very conveniently access all the various settings and options up here. Now heading back over to the one-handed mode settings here, there are some other options. So you can see that instead of pulling the whole screen down, you can actually use this feature to access the notification shade. So we'll switch over to that, and then now, when swiping down here, it actually just pulls the shade down. And then from there, I can pull down further to access the various quick toggles. And then there is one final option, and that's called one-handed mode shortcut. So we'll enable that, and then now with that enabled, you'll see a small shortcut here on the side. So now when I tap on this button here, it's going to lower the entire operating system, just like one-handed mode would with the gesture. And then to get out of one-handed mode in this situation, you actually have two different options. You can do it the regular way, or if you want to, you can just tap on this icon, and then it does bring things back to normal here. Now the next thing I want to show you is a quick and easy way to access the camera app on the Pixel 7a, and you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system, and all you have to do is just double press on the power button, and then just like that, it immediately pulls up the camera app. So that's very convenient, and again, you can do it from anywhere, so you can be in your app drawer for example, and if you just double press on that button, it'll then pull up the app. Now with the Pixel 7a, by default, we don't actually get a battery percentage in the upper right corner here on the device. Now we do have a battery icon, which gives us some level of indication on the amount of charge left here in the phone, but nothing's better or more accurate than having an actual percentage up there. Now thankfully with this device we can still enable that, it's just not enabled by default. So we can pull down the shade here, go to the settings, go to search, type in battery, and then you'll see right there battery percentage. So go there, and then go here and select it. And then now, we do indeed have a battery percentage in the upper right corner, and you can view this from anywhere throughout the operating system. So that's certainly very helpful. Now heading back over to that battery menu, there's a few other good things here, and one of them I want to highlight is battery saver. So we'll go to battery saver, and you can see of course it's not enabled right now because we're using the phone as you normally use it. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you're running low on battery, and you don't have the ability to recharge the phone, or if maybe you're just starting off your day, but you know you have a long day ahead of you and no ability to recharge the phone in that situation either, then what you can do is enable battery saver, and then what that's gonna do is cut out a lot of various background tasks, but in exchange for that, you are gonna be getting much better battery life here in the phone. So we are getting a lower refresh rate, for example. The display is also a little bit darker as well. And then the phone has switched into dark theme too. So by doing all those various changes, you can get a lot more battery life here out of the device. Now there's also Extreme Battery Saver, so you can see it includes all the changes listed above, but it also pauses non-essential apps and their notifications. So we can switch over to that, 
and then you'll get even more battery life out of battery saver mode. Also, if you want to, you can enable a schedule or reminders. So if you do find yourself using this feature pretty consistently, then you do have that there for your convenience. And then also adaptive battery is enabled by default, but basically with adaptive battery, it's going to better optimize how your phone is using the battery so that you're able to then get extra battery life out of that as well. So between all these various options here within battery saver, you do at least have some options when you find your phone running low on battery. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to screenshot with the Google Pixel 7a. Now there are two different methods to do this and I'll show you right now. Now the first way to take a screenshot with the Pixel 7a is to simply hold down the power button and volume down for about a second. So we'll do that right now. And there we go, we took the screenshot. Then from there you can share it or edit it and it will save to the device. Now the second way to take a screenshot is to pull up an app of your choosing that you want to take a screenshot of, and then from there, swipe partially up to go to your recent apps, and then you'll see an option down here that says screenshot. So if you tap on that, it will take a screenshot of that app, and then you do have the option to swipe over to any app in your recent apps, and if you tap on that button, it will take a screenshot of that app. So that's really cool and very intuitive. Another cool option too is that we do have the ability here to select text, so in this same area, if you tap on select, you can see it has highlighted the various text here. And then from there, you can simply copy wherever you wanna copy and paste it wherever you wanna paste it. Now with the Pixel 7a, we're getting a really nice looking OLED display and it does feature a 90 hertz refresh rate and a 1080p resolution. Now I definitely recommend heading over to the settings, going over to the display settings, and then kind of customizing things to your liking. So for example, you can pick the screen timeout amount of time. By default, I believe it's a minute or 30 seconds. I did set it to 30 minutes because I've been making a lot of videos about this device, but I do recommend trying out different screen out times other than the default to see which one you prefer. You can also see another option here too that's called screen attention, and it prevents your screen from turning off if you're looking at it. So it does use the front camera to see if you're actually looking at the phone, and then if you are, it won't turn off the display. So you might wanna try that out too, especially if you find yourself in situations pretty often where the screen is actually turning off despite you actually not wanting it to. But then going back here, you can see we have the ability to enable dark theme. Now I already showed you that a little bit when I showed you battery saver mode, but you can enable dark theme right here. And then things of course are darker. Now this can come in handy later on in the day or if you're in the movie theater, or maybe you just prefer the look of dark theme, then it is here for you. And then if you do wanna pick a schedule for that, you can enable that as well. We have a lot of other awesome options here too. So we have display size and text. So if you want the font to be bigger or smaller, you can do that. If you want the various items within the display itself to be bigger or smaller, you can pick that as well. There's also an option here for bold text and high contrast text. And then this one's really cool. And it is the option to pick the type of navigation you want here on the device. So by default, we are getting gesture-based navigation. So if you swipe partially up, it takes you to recent apps. If you swipe all the way up, it'll take you home. And then if you swipe from the side, it'll take you back. So that is pretty intuitive, and I think a lot of people do prefer gesture-based navigation. But if you do instead prefer the traditional Android 3 button navigation, you also have the option to switch over to that. So if we go here, you'll see the option for three button navigation, and then we can enable that. And then now we have a home button, back button, and recent apps buttons here. So this is the way Android was originally. So if that's what you're used to, or if that's what you prefer, you can go back to these buttons. But there are a few other things I wanna show you under display settings. One of them is colors. So by default, we have adaptive colors. If you want natural colors instead, you can try that out. So I personally feel like both are pretty similar, but maybe you do wanna kind of try that out and see what you prefer. We also have an option here for smooth display. Now I do recommend keeping this enabled, even though it does use up a bit more battery life on your device. But with the Pixel 7a, as I mentioned a second ago, this device does have a 90 hertz refresh rate display. And then with that, you're basically getting smoother animations when navigating around the phone. And overall, it does make the phone feel a lot more premium. So you have that ability right there for that. And then also we have screen protector mode. So if you do find yourself putting a screen protector on the device, and if for some reason it seems like your display is just not very responsive due to that extra layer, you can enable this for a better user experience. Now I'm a big fan of the keyboard that we're getting here with the Pixel 7a. 
However, one downside with it is that by default, we don't actually have a dedicated number row here. You can see the number row is kind of hidden up top. And then if you do go down here, you do get that number row, but we do have the option as well to get a dedicated number row up here along with the various letters. So what we're gonna have to do for this is go to the gear icon right there on the keyboard, then go over to preferences, and then you'll see right here number row. Now with that enabled, we'll go back, and then now we do indeed have a dedicated number row up top here. Also under keyboard settings, we do have the ability to pick different themes. So I'll show you this right now. So if you go to themes, you can pick the default, you can pick if you want it to be blue or green or really any color. Also there's different images you can have as the background theme for your keyboard and then also gradients as well. So I did switch over to blue right now and there you go, you can see it right there. So that's kind of a cool customization. So as promised, I do wanna show you a few things in the gestures menu. So pull down the shade here, go to the settings, go to search, type in gestures, and it's right there. So we'll go there and then here, and then you'll see that there's quite a few options here. And then some of them are already enabled, but others are not. So the first one here is quick tap to start actions. We'll enable that. And then with that enabled, you'll see we have a lot of different options here but basically you just tap on the back of the device to then enable any of these various options. So for this example, I'm actually gonna switch it over to open app, and then I'm gonna pick an app on the device. So I'm gonna choose Instagram for this demonstration. We'll go back there. So now with that enabled, I'll simply double tap on the back of the phone, and there we go. I've now pulled up Instagram. Well, let's now switch this over and try to pull down the notification shade by double tapping. So I'll double tap on the back of the phone again, and there we go, I now pulled down the shade. Now I already showed you, quickly open camera, that's just double pressing on the power button. There's also flip camera for selfie, so to switch in and out of selfie mode within the camera, just double twist when you're in the app. So we'll try that out right now. And there we go. And there we go, I flipped around once again. We also have tap to check phone, so all we have to do is just double tap on the display to check the various notifications here. There's also one-handed mode, I already showed you that. So if you lift up the phone, it'll turn on the display. And then this option, flip to shush, will enable that. And then basically if you flip the phone over, it'll put the phone in do not disturb. And then if you pick it back up, it'll take you out of that mode. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Google Pixel 7a. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.